Hi, my name is Tom Mason and welcome to another Life in the Wild video blog for Wex Photographic. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at how to construct a DIY protective case for your camera when using it as a remote. So for example, here is my uh, remote camera box. It's quite a sturdy construction out of a Pelican case with a mini tripod on the bottom. And these are perfect for positioning for those wide angle images of wildlife, be it in your garden or out further afield. So the idea behind the remote box is to give your camera a little more protection when it's outside in the field. The, this one here, constructed of a Pelican case, is a little more of an expensive version. Um, the reason behind that is I leave it out for quite a long time and that means I want it to be as waterproof as possible. But before I kind of had the funds to build one of these, even though it still looks a little bit rough, I made a very similar thing out of, quite simply, something like this, a Tupperware box. Now all you have to do really is cut a hole in the front to position your camera in it and that means that you're going to take the worst of the elements away to help your camera stay dry and when you're using it outside. Here's something we've done earlier and all we're going to do is take that off. You want one with a removable lid because this is going to form the base of where you're going to push your camera on. And what you can do is take that top off and you're going to need to cut a flap on the front. Like here, you can see we've already pre-sawn down the sides with a hacksaw. And then what we're gonna do is merely cut off the top and use that as a hood. Now, before we get on to doing that bit, I'm just gonna explain about the bottom and why you want it to be a removable one, is that you want to drill a hole on the bottom here, and that's gonna be for the tripod brush of your camera. So that's gonna find a place and settle on there to hold it in position um, when you clip on the top. Now I've got to also cut away a section of this side to make sure that my camera holds flat. The reason you want the tripod brush is simply it allows you to position the camera a lot easier. You can use it on a tripod or a tree mount um, and this means that it makes it much more versatile. So we're going to go ahead and do this for you and then show you when we're done. So as we talked about we cut out the front like this and we've used that section to make a makeshift hood on top just to protect the camera from any kind of water falling directly down onto the lens just to make sure that we don't get any splatters that could mist up or ruin our image. It's important to remember that although these boxes, you know, the actual plastic sections are waterproof, if you do leave them out for long enough, you will get some moisture coming inside. The reason these are really great um, for use over something like um, a standard waterproof cover that's made of plastic, one of the ones that's a plastic bag, is that these don't flap around as much in the wind, they don't move as much, meaning they're less likely to scare your subject. You can also put the box out in advance where you're going to work with it, getting your subjects used to it before introducing the camera at a later date. Of course, they just settle on nicely above your camera, giving it good protection. Now, the way that I'd be triggering this is either through the use of a camera trap setup, something like a remote set of triggers, or a pocket wizard or radio remote, just to do it myself from a further distance so I can watch what's happening in front of the camera and trigger it when I think my subject's in the right place. This is really handy for those subjects that are a bit more worried that you know, but you still want to get a wide angle image. When working with a box camera like this, there are a few accessories that can be really handy um, to make them more versatile. The small tripods as shown here, clamp mounts for working in trees, or just a small bit of scrimnet for helping blending them into the environment. So that's it for this video, and why not have a go yourself at making your own remote camera box, and join us again soon for another Life in the Wild video blog.